my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And what do we do? Well, we provide mentoring and training services for, for different mechanical engineering codes. And we provide equipment certification and re-rating services as well. We'd be pleased to help you. So let's continue with our slides. Welcome back, folks. We're going to continue our journey through API 579.2, which is the example uh, manual, which is was published in 2009, which is basically based on 2007. And uh, this is a commentary for that. And we're going to be looking at particularly level two assessments. And um, and so we're going to go look at a lot of things today. We're going to look at the evaluation methods called A, B, and C. We're going to look at method A with the two options, A and B. And then we're going to look at something called the stress ratios. And uh, we're going to look at a figure 3.7, which is the mat reduction that we can use. And uh, we'll look at post weld heat treatment. Five API 579.1, they remind us that our goal is to ensure that our CET is greater than our mat and uh, the process requirements are greater than the temperature for material of the compo each component we're examining. So if the operating conditions change, then we have a reassessment is required. And this is all this assessments are based upon the inspection and maintenance as per API 510 or NB23, which we may do some view, uh, videos in the future. If you are interested, to let me know. So there are the three methods. So let's look at them. Method A is a pressure temperature within a safety operating envelope. The second method is called a qualified by hydro test method. So, you know, we're doing proof testing, right? And method C is, you know, using qualified materials of construction, service, and environmental experience. So this is where, you know, you've done it before and, and uh, you have the experience with it and it's had this situation. And uh, based upon that, you're making your, your decision. Now, the one that we're going to focus on is, is method A, and this leads into the next example called, uh, in the next episode called example 3.5. A level two assessment, we're going to find that there's a lot of level one involved with that because level two builds from level one and level three builds from level two and one. So, it reminds us that the vessel must be constructed to section eight, division one and two. And, um, you know, option A is a governing thickness and exemption curves. And the other one is if we had, ex you know, impact test results, you know, using the, you know, analysis by proof and experience. And, uh, but it, in our, our example that we're leading up to, we're going to focus on option a because it's the most you know technical and um and that's what uh these these examples are sort of based on Move this a little bit closer so our method a step one mat option selection so option a we would follow step 1.4 paragraph 3421C in the 2007 edition. I think it's just about the same for the the uh, the later edition. And um, we're going to determine the mat from figure 3.4 to find and based upon the applicable toughness curve and the governing thickness. And then there's mats for flanges, which are set to minus 29. And, uh, you know, if there's very thin materials, then we get a credit to minus 48. And, and I mean, a reminder that this is all basic rules that you find in Section 8, Division 1 and Division 2. 
and uh, we're going to take advantage of the post weld heat treat uh, in in 1.5 where we get the reduction in um, in the, the the MAT. So we're going to like a little bit more at method A step one options. Okay, so this is option B. We would follow uh, step one paragraph 3.4.2. And here we would look at impact test results and the required in, by, and that are required by international standards. So that would be the option B. Step two, method A. Uh, we look at all applicable loads and coincidental mat, and we use table 8.1 in Annex A of the 2007 section, and they. And reminder that in the later edition they they move these these annexes around and uh, you know we need to use the loss with the nominal thickness the FAC if that's the future you know corrosion allowance right uh, we base upon the nominal thickness and then we look at E and E the, which is you know the the efficiency of the welding and then we look at tt minimum with the applicable weld joint efficiency step three stress ratio so there's there's a few ways of doing this so we have our thickness which we look at this is the ratio of our of our um, thickness and we use the loss that's the corrosion that we've used up in the future corrosion allowance and then we get our governing thickness from that and then over the mid t minimum and the you know well joint efficiency so there we go so the next one is called stress and this is where we take the stress ratios and the third method is pressure temperature and that's for hydro testing about the reduction in the mat based upon the you know, the, the ratio of this of the thickness right we are going to look here in this part about 3.7 it's a really important when we do our evaluation because this is sort of our our heart and lungs for doing the evaluation and there is some complexity associated with these curves that you should be aware of and they're based upon the available excess thickness for for carbon and low alloy steel. So there's limitations to this. You can't use it for for you know stainless steels, for example. And if you go to 3.4, uh, what you're going to see is all the equations for this, because in you know level two assessments, you know them the, there's a lot of math to do, and it's um, you know it's important to to you know get these and equations to reduce the you know risk of error and so on and and um, so you can really you know do the calculations I mean there's also online software which uses you know this um, these equations as well so let's let's uh, let's analyze this in the next few slides note two so this is I call that the point four curve because basically what happens is the stress as their stress ratio drops there's a point where the stress is so low in the in the part that um uh you there's a credit you can take and there's a limit to how much credit you can take so let's look a little bit more at what note two says so which is shown there so the, for this to work you have to have less than uh, 17.5 KSI 120.8 megapascals to follow that particular part of the curve. The, I mean, the up above that curve, you just follow the same, you know, ratio to get your stress reductions, but you know, to a point you can get 0.4. So, um, you know, and also what this is shows is this boiler pressure vessel code section eight division one, that's the, the, we're using the old allowable stresses and all that uh, pre-1999 and uh, 
and also you can use ASME B31.1 prior to 2002. Note three is, um, we'll talk about that one, it's a point th three note. And it's kind of interesting because in the, the metric table for um, this curve, they mentioned notes seven, eight, and nine, but the graph shows uh, note two, three, two, three, and four, which is an error. It should be note should correspond to the change. But anyway, so uh, that's the way I interpret it. So I think it's correct. So the next thing is this 0.35 curve applies to 17 and a half KSI, 120.8 megapascals. Uh, it has to be, you know, the allowable stress at room temperature has to be greater than that, but less than 20 KSI or 137.8 megapascals. Secondly, this is applicable to boiler pressure vessel code, ASME Section 8 Division 1, 2000, or 1999 and later, where they, where they changed the allowable stresses. And um, this applies to, you know, ASME B31.1, uh, 2002 and later editions. Note four curve, as shown there, is I call that the point three curve. Anyways, the, the, there's more rules for that. This is a jump up in the allowable stress at room temperature greater than 20 ksi or 137.8 megapascals, but it has to be less than. 25 KSI 172. So you have to go and look up these material values of this material. And it's applicable to uh, ASME Boiler Pressure Vessel Code Section 8 Division 2. And it's applicable to, to ASME B31 3. So then we look at step four, a reduction of mat based upon the stress ratio. We're going to continue that. So if RTS is less than the RTS of the threshold, which if you're called the notes two and three and four, so you could be in a 0.4 or 0.35 or 0.3 per that graph, depending on your materials and so on, then the, there's, it's just set to minus 104 degrees centigrade or minus 155 and no matter what the stress ratio is and that's the end of it tricky rule this is called a uh, step four reduction in mat so this is the case when our our stress ratio you know for based upon our thickness right is greater than our threshold which is at 0 0.4 0 0.3 and 0.5 then you can still use the the, the curves, but so basically how you would do your adjusted mat is you would take the maximums of of these two cases. So MAT minus the the temperature reduction, which is shown on the you know the the, the horizontal part of of the figure, and then you make that adjustment based on that, which is kind of familiar from previous videos. And then, but there's an exception. So if you end up with a mat that you've adjusted and it's less than 48 degrees centigrade or minus 55, then it's it's uh, not permitted. And you have to use minus 48. That would be the maximum of those two. So if you're at, if you calculate max uh, mat at say minus 30, then you're, you're fine. Uh, then you'd use minus 30, but if you calculate you know, after the adjustment, minus 50 centigrade, then you have to use uh, minus 48. So I'm just cautioning you on uh, that one. Option B, reminder that, you know, we have to go, we revert to minus 104 centigrade or minus 155 by equation. So when we, we get this below you know, the, the required curve, then we have to use that value. Interesting that we can take, we can do very similar to what we did in the level one assessment. We can, we can actually apply for a further credit to reduce our MAT further, you know, if we need to. Uh, there's a few extra steps, but let's go through them. They, they're not, um, I, I find that they're not complicated, um, easy to understand, 
so the first is a starting point. So we use the mat in step one using option A. And then if our materials are P1 group one or P1 group two materials, then this reduction is applicable. And if our wall thickness is equal to or greater than or less than 38 millimeters or less than or equal to 1.5 inches, then we can apply this. And here's some notes about post weld heat treatment. And uh, the post weld heat treat and the status of the post weld heat treat has not changed because you've done repairs and so on. And so this is basically it. You can get, you can go on my, another minus 17 point uh, degrees centigrade or uh, 30 degrees. So if you have a program like Compress, for example, they, there's a, you know, they, a lot of them will, these vessel programs will uh, do the assessments and they will, you know, give you, you know, the, these things automatically. So, but it's really important to understand where all these reduction credits are taken into account. So let's take a look at this step six. It, step six is just a reminder that you have to do every single component in a vessel. And I mean, this can, that can be quite time consuming, but that's what you have to do. So if there's, it includes flanges, you know, uh, pipe and so on, every pressure containing component that, um, you know, you need to do in your analysis. Bring up the minimum thickness requirements. And uh, it's important because there's always a lot of question about team in, which should I use? Well, the, the advice that's given in APIs, it, it shall be based upon the minimum required thickness of the undamaged component at the design conditions. And um, I hope that was helpful. And uh, we will we'll continue our ep episodes um, in the next edition. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.